Yo, what up gamers, this is Reporadark here, and today I'm going to be watching one of the games of Felipe Sexo. This guy is the rank 1 challenger player on EU West, and he has a staggering 61% win rate out of 152 games on Tristana, making him arguably the best Tristana player in the world. We're going to take a look at his gameplay and see exactly what it is that he does that makes him perform so well at this highest level. So typical standard level 1 where he just covers the jungle entrance over here. Ideally, you do want the Alistar or somebody covering over here as well. Ideally, you don't want Viego AFK, but it is what it is. We make do with what we get. It looks like Lee will start blue, so Felipe is gonna have to leash. Also, interesting to note here, he started with the long sword in three pots. I checked a bunch of his games, and actually, this is a very common start for him. He likes to use the start when he's against high poke bot lanes. Uh, some people would use Doran's shield in this context, but I really don't think Doran's shield is actually very good on certain ADCs, especially Tristana. Longstar 3 plus, I've never tried it, but I could see it working because you do still get the AD. You get a lot of sustain from the 3 potions. I, I barely know anybody who does this, but something this guy does and clearly it seems to work pretty well for him. Is okay, so level 1 going to be zoned off the wave? That's pretty normal. The only thing Alistar can do at level 1 is the flash Q. If he can't one-shot them, that's not worth. They're just going to back off, let themselves get zoned. This is not when they're strong, this is when Kai'Sa Sen is strong. They just gotta wait and bide their time until they're actually in a good position to fight back here. Or is he gonna start at the level 2? Want to take a tiny bit of poke there. He's just staying in range for the XP as much as possible. But if he's not getting lost hits, he doesn't need all the lost hits. Or even barely any of the lost hits. He just needs to make sure he's keeping up in XP so he can actually remain relevant. Once they hit the level 2. Okay, so Tristan and Alistar now both level 2. Probably don't want to engage though, both because of their HPs. Although they have healed up a bit, but also mainly because of the wave state. They're up against a massive wave while they didn't have too many minions. They just want to continue trying to farm up here. Now the wave is a bit more... Um, I was gonna, Yo, okay, so yeah, now the wave was a bit more even. So they could actually start to maybe look for an engage soon. And especially because Tristan is back to full HP, thanks to that potion. Alistar was healthy as well. You could look for an engage there. Kind of didn't go according to plan. Oh well, happens. But that was the idea there. That was their time to engage. If they wanted to. Now they're in a bit of a pickle. I'll start can really engage. Too efficiently here without his flash. If he wants to try and engage. He has to walk up to take a lot of poke without his flash. He does try and fish for it with the hex of flash. So far, Tristan is quite a bit behind in CS considering the minute that we're in. Although it's not quite as bad as it looks because this wave will crash into the turret eventually and she'll get the last hit most of that. Because it is a bit complicated, her being Tristana, she will miss a lot more CS than necessary. Here again, pretty close to the turret. This would be a really good time to engage and so Alistar does. He goes straight onto Senna, take her down, and jumps out after the Zenzala gank. Usually you would want to focus the AD carry in this lane though, considering there's two AD carries, it doesn't really matter what you go for, it's fine. Whoever you're focusing there, you're focusing, AD, focusing an AD carry is going to do a lot of DPS, so it's better, to, better just to go on whoever you can kill. Alistar goes down there, but it's a good fight overall for the Tristana bot lane. Does get turned around, so Tristana... Uh, so Kai'Sa also does get a kill, though. But overall, I mean, considering that was when the stage of the game where Tristana Alistar was weak, they did come out of this relatively good. About the best they could hope for. Considering there was a gank. Okay, he's gonna look to shove this in on this wave. 
He knows he can shove it in fast enough before this next wave arrives because he has a lot of wave clear with the Tristana E. Doesn't even use the Tristana active to actually kill the wave though, just uses the passive. Seems to be enough. On his first back, he will get Berserkers. I checked a bunch of his games. He also loves to do this. Berserkers Wash. Not so good in all lanes, but very good for poking, trading in the lane. Also mainly for shoving. If you can't afford the Noon Cover on the first back, then Berserkers are going to be your second best bet. Actually looks for the mid roam here. Looks for a Senna here. Not gonna be able to get her. This this was a good time to do this because this wave was pushed in over here. Kaisa can't just instantly shove this in. So there's no way for her to lose a bunch of CS under turret here. It gives her plenty of time to get this mid roam off. While barely losing barely losing any CS because this wave is just building up and becoming bigger and bigger. So she's not losing too much CS for that roam. Also worth mentioning, Tristana is one of the best ADCs to roam on. Probably the only one better is Twitch, because of the stealth obviously, but Tristana is also tremendously good at ganks, just because of her extremely long range jump. And her burst, it makes her one of the best ganking ADCs. So definitely not a play you usually see ADCs go for, that early level 4 gank, but it can definitely be a game changer. Now rooming into the enemy jungle. Doesn't want to follow Alistar though. But he is just sitting here getting vision for his team, that's also really useful and he's still in position to collapse and that is going to lead to a kill. Red team only knows that Zin Zhao and Senna are there because of the Tristana sitting in that brush. That would be a few kills for red team. They do drop one kill on the Alistar, but for a good fight. I want to say that it was mainly Tristana's efforts that made that. Obviously, it was her, both her and Alistar roaming, but it was her smarts just sitting in this brush, just getting extra vision for her team that led to their team knowing about the Sun and Zenzel rotating up there. Of course, it was very unlikely the blue team would have a ward there, so it was pretty safe for her to do that. Very little chance that she would get collapsed on there. Again, this wave is in a really good wave state. This is going to be pushing towards her. Because it's going to be pushing towards her, not much of this blue wave is going to be dying. That is why Sana, uh, Kaisa here will just trench of this in as quick as possible. She wants this to crash, ideally, into this turret, so Tristana will miss, miss as much CS as possible. We'll see if the crash happens in time. Okay, the melees will go down to the turret, but that's about it. She still gets pretty much all of these casters. One will walk into turret range unnecessarily, because minions are annoying. But yeah, she will still get at least 4 CS here. And this is uh, after Kaisa managed to get into lane fast enough to hard shove it. She still arrives to this big ass wave. Making use of the wave state to get some good runs off. Very big. It wants to roam, uh, wants to shove again. We'll see if she converts that into another roam, or maybe they will try and dive Senna here, assuming that Kaisa is backed. Okay, they're both in lane. Do they still want to dive here? They might just go into the Senna. Senna is level 5 right now, very squishy. Okay, her team is collapsing, she's just gonna run away from Senna and Kai'Sa while her team collapses from behind. Should be collapsing right about now unless she thinks the fight is just doomed. Yep, we'll go in. It's a bit late. Be going on Zillion, doesn't really get to do much here. Probably should have rotated sooner, but it will. Worth noting her bolt, by the way, after the Berserker's Grief, she just stacked as much AD as possible. This is very strong with Tristana. She probably, she, he probably could have gone for the Noon Quiver, but instead goes for the Pickaxe and Double Longsword. That just gives you more AD than Noon Quiver. It's really good for bursting in lane. 
Gives you more early game power than just straight up Moon Quiver. If you've already got the Berserkers. You've already got plenty of attack speed at that point. So it shoves in bot lane instead of pressuring for platings or anything. Just moves up into the river again along with Alistar. The honey fruit will decide there's no play to be made here. Alistar gets into a bit of trouble though. But Tristana will just head back into the lane, pick up that farm. She sees the wave is crashing into the turret, decides that whatever is going on here, it's not free enough for her to be worth moving there when she is guaranteed to miss the bot lane. Yes, so if she doesn't immediately go bot lane. So she chooses to go bot lane instead. Bear in mind that the other times that she has roamed, it has been guaranteed that she would not lose much CS bot lane, if any at all, you know? Hence why she didn't move for this roam, or didn't uh, commit to it, but did go for the others. Comes through there for some reason. Wanted to start pressing the Kaisa as soon as possible, I guess. The Viego rotating over, but no lead to anything. It will back off because of Zhao, I guess. Jumps on the Kaisa through the wall. He's got blocked by Zillion, but he does get the reset on W, so that's going to keep him safe. Moves away from the Kaisa. Instead of waiting for her to revive, just moves on to the rest of the fight. Manages to pick up a few kills for her team. Kaisa did manage to stay alive in the end, but... Probably moving on to the rest of the team was more worth overall for Tristana. Yep, overall a really good fight for red team here. Gonna go for those platings since there's a big ass wave here. Probably just gonna go for the second one only. Nope, also heading for the third. Has the mana for the 30, and it's only it's important to note here this is not a cannon wave. That means that this wave is gonna pretty much just evaporate instantly to the turret or uh, to the bomb on the turret. That is why he can get away with doing this. If it was a cannon wave, I guess he probably wouldn't have stayed for that third. Plating at the very least, it would not have eat the wave. He did not want to run that wave state for himself. But this way is just gonna lead into a full reset. All he resets. Gets the Kraken Slayer, grabs a Longsword that will be building towards the uh, Phantom Dancer. Waited for refillable or a pot or a or that then we'll see what he went for there. Note the Alistar roaming while there's nothing for him to be doing in the lane. That's another kill into the Kaisa. Sana starts to rotate over. Again, the wave state is pretty much neutral on boss, so she's not missing out on much here. But there's a, nothing to do on mid lane. She does want to move over here and start pushing that. Can maybe get the turret, at the very least, one more plating. And at the very least, it's a given that she can crash this wave into the turret, make Kaisa miss all of this. Uh, Diego beats her to the wave, so she'll just move over to the Drake with Leeson. No point splitting farm with your teammates if you don't have to, so. Because Viego showed up on bot lane, she decided to go for mid farm instead. But before mid farm, may as well help Lee get the Drake, make sure that's guaranteed. Now she goes for the mid farm. Doesn't just go bot lane because Viego's already bot. You don't want to share farm. And the Viego didn't really need her help there. Goes the mid wave, has nothing to do afterwards because she can't pressure for the hurt with Zillion there. So she just goes for Raptors, that's pretty free. Lee, there's too much action on the map right now for Lee to ever want to full clear, so one map going missing for Lee Sin does not mean absolutely anything. Just a free time to pick up some extra farm for Tristana. Gonna probably look to shove here and then look for some action on bot lane. Indeed. Well, the fight is already over, so she'll just move back onto mid lane. That grew on by Silas. Ooh, rage quit ult, sir. Cannot jump on anyone here because their W is on cooldown. Despite the Alistair engage, there's nothing to do there. Go a bit aggressive on Tazillion, but not gonna be anything more than just a little bit of damage.
was a really aggressive move on Zillion there. There's very little vision. Yep. Overall, very over aggressive. Has to flash out. Good thing she had flash. It's probably the only reason she went for that, but still not even worth it. Very little chances of killing Zillion there. And very high chances that she would get caught out by someone out of vision. But still, she gets out with her life there. Now that the whole team is finally grouped mid, going for this turret. Going aggressive on the Zinzao, who's trying to aggressively defend this. Ooh, he's stuck on the wrong side of the fight here. And also getting caught a bit by Silas there. Beautiful ultimate air to get him away while he's jumping. Alistair well, re-engages, but there's not too much Tristana can do here. She got her cooldowns back up now, but she's really low, and their team is kind of winning this fight. If she tries to help out here, she's probably just going to die. Better to just back off and bite her time. Wait and see if maybe the enemy team makes a mistake. Maybe over dives here. Not ideal that she got hit by SW there. Would have been nice if one of her teammates could block, but not going to happen, and she will go down because of it. Bill Viego manages to pick something up on the back, manages to convert that into yet another kill. Does go down in the end there, but picks up two kills there for his team, and that's all off of red team just choosing to back off here, going to the turret, and that first is a dive from blue team. Still probably worth overall from blue team, at the very least it goes even, but it's, it goes a lot better for red team than it could have, just because they backed off in the, into the turret before continuing the fight. This is going to go for red buff here, unless he chooses to move over here, realizing there might be a fight. Did seem a little bit like he might have been pathing over there, but... Seems like the fight wasn't going to happen, so he goes over the red buff. At this point, the fight is way too far away from himself. He's just going to go top. Diego should realize Tristana is going to get top here way before him, and... Back off. Keiko... Does start to back off, but Tristana already started backing off first as well. <laughs> really big miscommunication here. Classic to look you, miscommunication. All the CS goes down or t under turret for absolutely no reason. Not ideal, but oh well. Uh, okay, nice. Red team managed to get a long Kaiso over there on the bottom side. As I said, you don't want to be splitting farm with your teammates if you can avoid it. So both of them realized that the other one wanted to get the top lane farm, and both of them backed off from it. They, uh... Both respected the fundamental that you shouldn't be splitting form with your teammates, but it kind of went wrong when they both thought the other one was going to get it. Donna generously gave it to Viego, Viego gave it to her. Neither ended up getting the farm. Donna should have realized though that Viego was backing off and just finished the, uh, stopped doing the golems. <coughs> We're currently sitting at about 7 sits per minute, I want to say. Way ahead of the Kai'Sa. And way ahead of anybody on blue team. Gonna get another Drake here. Third Drake, post him a soul point. We're gonna want to rotate it over to mid lane. I guess Viego's gonna take that farm. Maybe she'll do Raptors. Maybe she'll decide to stay grouped with the team. Yep, Alistar looks for a play here. This is where staying grouped comes in handy. Play doesn't really work out though. They're gonna want to back off here. Isn't Zara re-engages, or Isen does. Being very careful here, trying to put out damage but not over committing. Which is safe from the Silas. Go aggressive on whoever's in range here, whoever's squishiest. But not over committing again, once again. Doesn't end up going down though. Guess he didn't have W. Yeah, overall, a bit of a botched engage from the Alistar. It didn't go too well. Alistar was just too low before the fight even really began there. Speed this up. I 
Okay, so here she's either gonna look to do raptors or mid farm, or she's just probably gonna move over to this fight as soon as possible. Maybe it'll already be too late, but the opportunity arises, you do want to be here. Alright, there's nothing to do, so yeah. But in case there was something to do, best to be as close to the fight as possible. Then, once there, once you know for sure there's nothing to do, go for the mid farm, shove it out. Now, I'm gonna see if she's gonna do any if she can do anything with the Lee Sin. Not really much she can do against five people, honestly, even with the Lee Sin there. What she chooses to do here. Tries to support Leeson. Oh no way. Leeson gets the Baron there. Okay, crazy steal from the Leeson. That was insane. That was actually one of the cleanest steals I've ever seen. That was so clutch. But credit where credit's due, it was all uh, that was all off of Tristan appealing the Salas off of Leeson. That's what he chose to do in that fight. He did he didn't entirely give up on the Baron fight. He didn't want to go into five people, obviously. He didn't want to stay back and poke. But he instead of just pushing mid or farming raptors or something, he did stick around, see what he could do. Eventually he finds his opportunity when Silas goes onto Leeson, tries to deny him entry to the Baron Pit. Tristana takes this opportunity to take out Silas. That gives Leeson the room to go into the Baron Pit and get a seal off. So biding her time there, very patient. Let's find a really good opportunity. Probably just gonna want to back off here. Don't want to fight up too much. More than you can chew here. Honestly, probably just want to back off here. Don't want to overextend. Okay, does get the kill on to leave on to Silas. Okay, it looks like her team does turn it around, so she does. Manage to benefit from staying here instead of just backing. Don't listen to me. What do I know? I'm not challenger. Looks like Alistar does still want to find an engage, but the rest of the team seem to be backing off. Not a great engage, not on the same page on this team with his team at all. It was a decent engage, but it's also not an engage you have to go for. It's also a perfectly valid decision to just back there. Either one would have been fine, it's just a shame that everybody had a different decision in mind. So I'll just pick up the turret here while the team is distracted from the base. Go for the raptors, why not? It's free, nobody's here in position to contest. Leaves it to Leeson, I guess. Or... Yep. And now we'll finally back off. Alright, so she already had the Phantom Dancer, and now she... Interestingly, she'll get the components for Infinity Edge, BF Sword, and Pickaxe. Then she sells her Doran's Blade. And not even for a Cook Cloak, but actually for a stopwatch. That is very interesting. That is not something I would ever do. But challenger players are very good at using stopwatch, and potentially she will find a really good use out of this in a team fight, and it could be a team winning play potentially. Let's see how much use she gets out of this. You know, I have been wanting to talk about her runes for ages, but there's just like so much potential action about to go on. I'm not really finding a good opportunity. If I can't talk about it before the game ends, I'll talk about it at the end. The Salastar won't stop trying to engage, man. Let me talk about the runes. Look, he's engaging again. <sighs> there's just no moment to breathe. He has to wait out the Zinzalt. Doesn't want to overcommit here. Okay, here's the stopwatch. Not really able to save her in that fight, though. It was a really good stopwatch, but the fight was a bit too much of a disaster, really, to be salvaged. It was just getting overrun by their entire team there. It was They were just too split off right team here. Overall, stopwatch doesn't really change the outcome of the fight. Kind of a wasted gold investment, but oh well. Could have been a lot better. Potentially, it could have been a real game changer. Okay, well, now that they're dead, let me just finally talk about these runes. No, I can't, because I need to wait for her to be alive. Like, Vega will go down here. Now, Tristan is finally coming alive. Alright, let's talk about her runes. So, she got the standard Tail of Blades, standard Taste of Blood. Interestingly, she's got Zombie Ward. I've been seeing this become a lot more popular lately on ADCs. Um, 
I'm not really sure exactly what the purpose is because take the, take down an enemy wards cause friendly war friendly zombie wars to sprout from the corpses. Thing is, as an ADC, you don't like take sweeper. You don't buy too many pinks, so. I'm not sure. I mean, I, I can definitely see the, the the point in it in Challenger, where you're playing very closely with your support and you support a sweeper. Wait, the support doesn't have sweeper. Okay, that's interesting. I don't think he's getting too much use out of it <laughs> in this game, unfortunately. But, you know, usually your support would have sweeper and you'd be walking around with them. You would get a lot of uh, zombie ward procs. It'd be a more guaranteed scaling option than uh, eyeball collector is. Also taking the Ravenous Hunter, and worth noting on the precision side, she's pretty much going full scaling. She's running overheal instead of triumph. That is a better scaling option, but Donna definitely uh, really lo loves the triumph in the early game, so it's interesting whenever somebody chooses to veer off of that. He was also previously running Presence of Mind. Again, not really the traditional option you want to use on Tristana. I would say she benefits a lot more from the HP to win those clutch fights compared to the mana store. But yeah, currently running overheal for the full scaling. And again, in line with that scaling, she's running bloodline. Usually you would want a lacrid interest on it, because you've already get you've already got healing from Ravenous Hunter anyway. And uh Alacrity is basically the better early game option because it stacks so much faster. But you do eventually just end up having a much more useful ruined late game if you run bloodline instead. It just takes a really long time to kick in. Because you don't get too much lifestyle early on. And uh, there's less benefit to lifestyle early on too anyway. But at this stage of the game, when she's got a fully maxed out, she's definitely benefiting from going for the split line instead of her alacrity. Don't necessarily want... Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say that you want to go for the bloodline in your typical Loilo Thana games. I'd say alacrity probably is usually better, but uh, worth noting that it does give you better scaling to go bloodline in case that is something you prefer to go for. You prefer to have a better scaling Tristana. Especially in combination with uh, Overheal, of course, because this scales really well with any kind of healing you've got in your kit. If you are going to go with Overheal, it makes a lot of sense to run the Bloodline with it. Even if you already have Prime the Hunter. Alright, finally, they didn't fight long enough that I got to talk about the runes. Perfect. Let's go for the Baron here. This Alistair will die again for his ninth death. Guy just does not know how to chill. Uh, looks like blue team is very much over committing here for Viego. I really don't think that's worth. They're gonna be able to get at least an inhib uh, inhibitor here, probably even an Nexus turret. Zenzao is obviously not gonna be able to do anything here. Okay, well he will try. Just gets looked away by Tristana. He doesn't want to buy her chances. He's gonna back off as blue team does get their recalls off in time to defend. But still, one Nexus turret going down along with the inhib that is not even worth for killing the Viego. Okay, gonna back here. Already had that Infinity Edge, by the way. Managed to finish that in this previous back. Now going for the Vamp Scepter. Again, pretty good synergy with uh, Overheal, especially once you turn that into Bloodthirster. You're just gonna end up with this massive shield. Goes for uh, Elixir as well. This is a really good choice at this stage. Whenever you you suspect the game is probably gonna end within the next few minutes, Elixir is elixirs are just pretty much the most cost efficient things in the game. It just gives you crazy stats for how much it costs. So if you're not expecting to be able to finish an item anyway anytime soon, then that is just crazy efficient to go for. If you expect that the game will end before you get to finish your first item anyway, is what I mean to say. It okay, doesn't go for the mid farm just now because uh, obviously there's a few members on mid lane. Does not have power there. Just wait for that to shove in. Now we'll collect this wave. Unfortunately, because of that power on the wave, blue team does have first access to the Drake here. Uh, didn't catch it, but eventually red team did get the Cloud Soul earlier on. So this is now. Elder that they're fighting over. However, however, Viego's pushing into the base from topside. Does not have Baron buff though. Just kind of going very aggressive here onto the Xylos. Well, he's in stopwatch. 
Just the least clean dodge onto Solus there. And it's just to take him down. There we will play the fight. Red team secures the Drake. And while Viego just wrecking havoc in their base. Pretty much the entire blue team has to come and defend against them. Got that J back up. Doesn't got to do too much with it. Potentially could have found the Kalanta Kaisa there because of the Elder though. However, it does still buy a lot of time for Red Team to take a second inhib and move on to the ne Lost Nexus turret here. Been looking for the engage. We'll find the insect on the Tana. Which is Tana will then finish off and then look to finish the game. There you have it, guys. Rank 1 Tristana, best Tristana in the world. Felipe Sek Sexo. If you guys enjoyed this video, feel free to drop a like and subscribe, leave a comment. Let me know if you'd like to see more videos of this style in the future for other ADCs. It's been a pleasure. See you next time, guys. Peace.